我叫贾梅坤，来自中国。我在莱顿大学学习商业信息工程技术。我选择莱顿大学，因为这里有我喜欢的跨学科的专业和全英文的教学过程。مرحبا، اسمي صلاح طارق الصحيمات، أنا من الأردن، جئت لدراسة الماجستير في القانون الدولي الأردن، التحقت في الدراسة في جامعة لايدن لدراسة ماجستير في القانون الدولي العام، تخصص القانون الجنائي الدولي، وسبب وجودي هنا هي سمعة لايدن، هي سمعتها العريقة في القانون الجنائي الدولي. Я Ірина Феоктістова з України. Я вирішила вивчати лінгвістику у Лейденському університеті через високий рівень освіти та чудові можливості для проведення дослідження. Я вивчаю мастер в астрономії в університеті Лейден. І я вирішую вийти, тому що це один з тих місць, де це інвестиція на альто, щоб стати на міті цієї акції. Hello, my name is Denise. I come from Chicago. I'm in the two-year master's program for biology, and I'm focusing on sustainability and biodiversity. I came here because the Institute for Environmental Sciences has a wonderful research program with a great reputation, and Holland is a great place to live. My name is Kostas Maga. I'm from Ireland. και σπουδάζω δημόσια διοίκηση στο Πανεπιστήμιο του Λάιντεν. Ο λόγος που επέλεξα το Πανεπιστήμιο του Λάιντεν είναι για τη μεγάλη του παράδοση. Κρίτη λαούτλα μόνα Λάιντεν, ο ούτλα έτσι από κοέτα, ο πακή πλέκε αθλή λέγγα γόλου μπο Ευρώπη. I'm Manmeet Singh from New Delhi, India. I'm studying in Leiden University, the School of Management. And uh, the reason why I chose it was because of the international diversity of students. Uh, we have students from Indonesia, China, India, Greece, Taiwan, Germany, America. It's like taking a world tour in the field of learning, sitting in one class in one year here. Mein Name ist Tina Macht und ich komme aus Wien und studiere hier Buchgeschichte. Ich habe mich für Leiden entschieden, weil man hier in der Stadt auf Schritt und Tritt der Geschichte begegnet. Ich bin Alper Ecevit, Türkim, Avrupa Birliği Çalışmaları Bölümünde Master yapıyorum. Leiden'ı seçmemdeki esas sebep, okulun 400 yılı aşkın saygın tarihi ve de Leiden kasabasının öğrenciler için yarattığı harika atmosfer. The main language of a musician is his art, music. And the reason I'm doing a research is trying to find a narrative language in which I can translate the thoughts Uh, which are taking place during the process of making music, during the process of thinking in sound. And this is a very difficult task uh, in the sense that we need language to say something about the unsayable. And so this is the, the challenge. <laughs> One of the main focuses of my study is the, the, the aesthetics, which has been called by musicologists of new complexity. But to give you a small example of what it actually means is when we compare a traditional notation, we see that music is made with the 12 tones uh, as we know them on a piano keyboard. And if you compare this with a complexity or new complexity score, you already in the image of the music the way it is written, you see that something else is going on. Hmm? For example, one of the things is how do you translate the movement onto paper? Hmm? Like the movement of the hands going up. 
And then you can see in the graphics that um, new ways of, of uh, notation are also similarly uh, developed. And this leads to a complexification of, of, um, of notation and perhaps also of playing music. And so another feature which might be interesting Microtones, they are called. Very complex writing, but a very simple movement, which could be translated. Well, if I use my language, I can't do this in an intellectual way, like... It's dead, completely dead. But if I translate, everybody understands the emotion, which could be underneath this sound, and it's translated into the cello, and suddenly there is this gap. Mm. Unless somebody shows and says, but no, it's just expressive music. For me, this intellectual way of writing music, this may be the interesting paradox. The more complex it becomes in writing, in many cases, the more expressive it becomes. They do not accept, uh, let's say, the simplification which is going on. If you look at television, for example, in soap series and so on, there you can see that um, there is a process of going on of to, to, to simplify um, all these things into recognizable patterns. In this particular complex music, there is a visual, theatrical, dimension which is also very interesting to to observe and it's more going to a concert with this kind of music is more than happening rather than just uh, listening um, you have to feel it with all your senses with your eyes listening by the eyes somehow and 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 and, and the ears but everything together the experience of, of space and the experience it's more a kind of ritual aspect and in this sense it has a unique quality the complex music also gives an opportunity to have a very intimate relationship with the musician and, and his instrument. I believe that this music cannot exist without the suites of Bach, without sonatas of Beethoven. But it's maybe the absolute outcome, the top of the mountain or something, the edge of a volcano somewhere where this music happens. 